Well, hey everybody, welcome back. Um, down here looking at a couple of buildings um, as I think about the next phase of what I'm gonna be doing while I'm waiting for uh, backdrops and styrene sheets, etc., cetera, uh, to be shipped. Um, and so what I'm looking at here uh, on the left is, uh, that's the factory flat uh, from downtown Deco, uh, pretty much unmodified. Um, I think that's kit uh, DD1056. That's a hydrocal plaster kit, uh, first one I've ever built. Uh, but I absolutely love the way that medium takes paint. On the right, uh, you guys probably remember fairly recently, uh, this building here uh, is a plastic kit. Um, those are some DPM uh, pieces I just put together. Uh, it wasn't a kit, rather, but uh, DPM parts um, cobbled together into uh, a little warehouse there. What's interesting is I used the exact same paint on the two medium. Um, both of them have a base color of, of terracotta from Folk Art. Uh, different amounts of tinting with other colors, things like burnt sienna, etc. Uh, in fact, the different buildings here are terracotta, but you know some of them have a little bit of white in it. So that one had a little bit of burnt sienna in it. I monkeyed around with the colors just a little bit, but the base color is uh, terracotta. And then you come over the whole thing with uh, a nice dirt uh, color like raw umber, a little wash, and you get that dirty brick effect. I did all the same things on the plastic kit and it just doesn't look as good. Um, maybe it needs more wash, you know, or some, some pastel or something, but just doesn't have the same, the same look as uh, terracotta on the, the hydrocal. So, I'm going to use uh, the, the medium on the left. I'm going to use hydrocal here um, uh, for a new building. And I'm going to show you where that's going to go here in just a second. Okay, we're just slightly to the right of where we just were. Um, the, the warehouses we were just discussing are down there. Um, so come in here just past the concrete lot. There's going to be a another warehouse. And you see the spur there uh, where the backdrop ceases to exist. Uh, there's going to be a warehouse right there. Uh, that's where I'm going to use a little bit of hydrocal. And let me show you what I'm doing uh, with that. Let me, uh, I'm gonna move over to the, uh, the work table. Okay, so I'm over at the work table and I'm just showing, uh, I have another uh, downtown deco kit here I intend to build as is. I think they make great products. I bought them straight from uh, the company's website. So I've got multiple kits from them. And I'm saying that uh, because the, what I'm actually gonna be building isn't this kit, but this one. And the reason I say that is this section right here, the left half side of this front street flat, um, I want to make a warehouse out of that. Um, I think it's got a really cool look to it, um, but I want more than one. And I don't want this to be controversial. Um, I, I, I think when I've talked loosely about what I was doing here uh, in the past, I got a comment or two about, uh, you know, well, why not support downtown deco? And I'm, I'm trying to show I am supporting them. I think they're a great product. I've talked about it a couple of times. Um, I've even bought multiple kits. Um, but what I'm doing here is a little different and these are for my consumption only. Nobody's selling anything. This is just for me. Um, but what I've did um, is if I move the camera up a little bit, I made a latex mold of that warehouse. Um, I did that over the summer. Um, that's the, that's the mold there and a couple of castings as I've been messing around with it. The reason I'm doing this rather than asking for, you know, or buying a couple more copies is I just want to teach myself a new skill. I want to learn to make castings. I want to mess around with a medium I've not messed around with before, uh, including pouring some of the stuff myself. So, um, what I've done is I, is I, I built this latex mold. Um, I used this product right here. Mold Builder. I got this on Amazon. Uh, it's a latex based product. And um, what I did was I took the original casting, which is not in the frame here. That's a, that's a, that's one of the copies. Uh, I took the original casting and I uh, put a gloss finish on it and I waited about a day. And then I did layer upon layer of latex and then gauze. Here's the gauze. Latex, gauze, let it dry. More latex, more gauze, let it dry. And I built it up 
uh, many, many layers at a time. I think I did six or seven or eight layers until I got this mold. And the detail comes through really well. Um, so you can kind of see the, the gauze and stuff around the edges. And this is just latex, fairly simple. Um, and there's a lot to this casting process. And I want to talk a little bit about that because it's, uh, it's a little tricky. So let me, I'm going to move to the other side of the table and show you guys a few things a little bit uh, more closely. Okay, so the mold making process specifically. Um, what I did was I took the original piece and I laid it on a mirror. And I used a mirror because I wanted it to get a really good square seal around the edges of it, right? So I set it like this. In fact, you can see the marks uh, where it was sitting. So I set it there like that. Um, turn the camera so it's in the, in the frame there. Um, kind of laid it on here. Uh, it got a layer of, um, like I said in the last clip, start with a good uh, gloss coat over the original casting. Then I laid it here. Then it got a layer of latex. And I waited a day for that to cure. And it got another layer of latex. And I waited a day for that to cure. Then I did latex. I laid gauze in the wet latex and added more wet latex on top of the gauze, right? And we'll let that cure a day. Then it got just a layer of pure latex, just building it up again. Then it got latex, gauze, and latex again, right? Put the latex on while it's wet, string the gauze across, uh, and then wet the back of it, cover it up with latex one more time. And then it got one more coat of latex. So in total, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, so there was six days, uh, day four and day five got latex, gauze, latex. The other days just got straight latex. So that's how we built the mold. And now I'm gonna talk about how we actually use it. All right, so over on the layout where these go, um, and in fact, I'll probably, uh, I need at least one more copy. I don't want to use the original because I may just build the kit as it was intended to be built and use it somewhere. Um, but I want at least two and perhaps three sections. I want, you know, a substantial warehouse that uh, warrants rail service. So uh, I'm kind of in the area. Uh, the first building will be, you know, go kind of up to the edge of that concrete and then run that way. So the first section may not have any rail served doors and then the doors uh, moving left to right will, uh, will be where you spot cars. And there's a little bit more track to the right. And um, I can add on to that if, if I want to uh, make it a little bit longer. Uh, as needed. So here's the first two castings I did. And from this distance, you know, they look fine. Um, but I want to show the one on the right a little bit closer. This was the first one I did. And I definitely learned some stuff from this. Now, actually, let me just bring it closer. It's kind of hard to see what I'm talking about. But if I bring it close, see the bubbles in the brickwork? There's bubbles, little cir circular bubbles. You can see it in the door too, little bubbles. And doing some additional research, I've learned not to pour the hydrocal in a dry mold. Um, one tip I saw, and that's what I did on the left. So let me come over there. Again, same mold. No bubbles. It's a good looking mold. Or good looking casting rather, same mold. Uh, the doors look look much better. There's no there's no circular bubbles to speak of in the bricks. Obviously, I need to clean up the windows and everything. The difference between the two is the second one, the mold got sprayed with about a 50-50 mixture of Windex and water. Not soaking wet, but just wetted down. And that surfactant in the Windex uh, serves to help the bubbles that are just naturally in the hydrocal when you mix it helps them to pop uh, and clear up. And so I'm going to make another copy because I don't want to use the one on the right. I don't like the bubbles. I want another one that looks like this, maybe two. So I'm going to show that. Uh, there's some, some stuff with how you mix the hydrocal too, as I've done some research and poked around. I uh, picked up a few tips there too, which I'll share. Um, but uh, the first thing I wanted to show was just as you use a mold like that, um, you definitely want to, you know, mist it down, not 
standing water in there with Windex and water, but just mist it down so that it's wet right before you pour the hydrocal. So let's mix up some hydrocal. I'll show you how we do that. So we're starting with uh, a little bit of lukewarm water there. Uh, and you want about a third of the volume of water uh, as to what you eventually want. And then we're just sort of sifting uh, very slowly, sifting the hydrocal into the water. You can end up with roughly uh, two parts plaster to one part water. Uh, and I'm adding it really slowly to get it to mix well without me having to agitate it much. Um, the reaction doesn't actually start until you uh, get in there and start physically mixing it. So I'll keep adding. And what I'm looking for is a dryish layer uh, on the surface. That's when you've got enough hydrocal added to the water and you've got the mix right. So kind of getting close here, so I'm showing that a little more closely. So there we go. We've got a, a bit of a dry layer. This is after about 10 minutes. Uh, we're ultimately going to let this sit for 20 minutes. So there's 10, uh, just letting it hydrate. And there it is after the full 20. Uh, so now we are ready to start using it. So first, I'm just going to gently uh, mix it by hand. Uh, the, the longer you let that thing sit there, the less you actually have to mix. And remember, it doesn't start reacting until you've mixed it. So uh, you can kind of control your pour uh, by how long you let it hydrate before you start mixing. So here I am coming in with the surfactant. Again, that's about 50-50 uh, water to Windex. Generic version is fine. And now it's ready to be poured. So uh, I'm just trying to get a, a mostly even layer. Just showing the consistency we got there. Um, but yeah, it's ready to pour. So uh, we'll just cover the mold uh, kind of up to the depth that the mold is. I don't know. It's a quarter to a... Uh, half an inch, no, not quite a half an inch, somewhere between a quarter and a half an inch thick. And I'm kind of getting it between all the windows as best I can. Uh, get it in there. Uh, it's a good um, loose mixture, so it flows pretty well. Uh, and then once you get the material you need into the mold, uh, I'll actually kind of pick it up and shake it, get a couple of bubbles out a little bit, you know, shake it around, get everything kind of everywhere. And then uh, put it to the side and let it sit. Uh, this will sit for, you know, 30, 45 minutes or so, and I'll check on it. Um, and before it hardens all the way, I'll go ahead and take it out. It'll be firm, but not all the way hard. Okay, well, I ended up with three passable castings. Uh, they all, like any hydrocal, uh, needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but that'll be the warehouse building that goes here. And then the end piece there, which you can kind of see being held up by the one, two, three block, uh, was the end of the building that came in the kit, but I'm not using the original uh, in, in here. This way I can um, you know, still have it if I want to use it somewhere else. So. This is what I'm looking at. Um, I ended up using three of those sections. Uh, and I, over here, uh, my friend that showed me how to do the castings in the first place last summer, uh, I think I showed this before, but he made a few, some cribbage walls in this loading dock. So um, because of where the turnout is, you know, I could move things down a bit. I've got plenty of room over there. Or I could make things a little bit interesting and stick that right in there. Kind of a little loading dock for the one door on the end, which wouldn't be rail served. Um, you know, a little access out to that concrete parking lot. So, I don't know, just messing around with that. Um, I would say from, uh, from this point on, all the track you see over here and what you don't see, it's all fair game. I have a plan, um, but exactly where all the industrial tracks and stuff is... Uh, TBD uh, as I go uh, from this point uh, to the right. So um, that's how the castings came out. I think I'll leave it here this week. Um, I've got some 
back, backdrops come in that I, I talked about in the last video uh, that I'll be working on. And, and while I'm not doing that, I'll be uh, messing around with, I've got, I've got two rejects. So I, got, I did five castings, uh, three of them are passable. The one with the bubbles I showed earlier in this video, and then I did one more uh, where the, the mold was just a little warped and it didn't come out as, uh, as, as flat across the front as I would have liked. So I'm gonna use those two to kind of monkey around with colors and paint. Uh, you know, how do, I wanna, how do I wanna paint them? What color brick do I wanna use? And I've got two whole sections, right, to mess with. So I'll do that before I get to painting this, but uh, these structures need to be cleaned up and all attached together. So that's all yet to come as we keep working left to right. So um, I'll leave it there, like I said. Uh, I hope you all are uh, all doing well and having a good, uh, good 2023 so far. And uh, we'll talk at you next week.